Call the meeting to order. We have the motion moved by Councilor Stockwell, second by Councilor Friesen. Resolved that the agenda for the September 18th, 2018 regular meeting council be received. Discussion? In favor? Opposed? Carried. We have the motion moved by Councilor Sackle, second by Councilor Friesen. Resolved that the minutes of the September 4th, 2018 regular meeting council be adopted as received. Discussion? In favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, the first item on your agenda under correspondence, the Communities in Bloom evaluation. Congratulations to Councillor Friesen and the people in Communities in Bloom for uh, winning the That's five our, Blooms bronze at the uh, Communities in Bloom. That was in Morris, and we've got a special mention for our uh, Swan Valley Historical Museum. They quite enjoyed it. And along with that came uh, another certificate of congratulations in our 3R initiatives and composting award. And it was sponsored by the uh, Equinox Industries and we got a $500 certificate and we'll be using that for not quite sure. But I think we're going to, we'll have a meeting tomorrow and we're hoping that we can uh, have enough with it and money that we have uh, to perhaps look after the uh, hanging pots on Main Street next summer. Well, again, pass our congratulations on to the committee and thank them for all the hard work they do for our community. Thank you. I will do that. Okay, the next uh, correspondence is from the Highway Traffic Board regarding the uh, uh, expansion at Myers North Penny, basically just for information. Okay, the next one is an invitation to the, I'm not even sure what it is. Maybe something that should go to the economic development, the business consortium meeting invitation. Is this a new organization or? Mm -hmm. It's brand new. Um, Derek Armstrong and Colin Peters from the co-op had come to visit me. They had also met with a couple of council members, uh, Councillor Mario, who had met with them as well. Um, they would like uh, someone from council to attend this meeting just to uh, to see what to, the new organization is about. So what is the date of it? I'll be waiting. I, I'd like to attend it. Okay. If I'm off, I'll want to bring it. Yeah, this is a committee that they want to start a, a town group to look at like loss prevention as a group with uh, common practices, best practices in the industry for um, injuries, loss prevention, those types of things so that uh, not everybody else is doing, reinventing the, the wheel on things. Um, also setting up like a network uh, between the businesses that if they see suspicious people um, that they have a network that they can rapidly pass that information on to the other businesses to be on the lookout for these type of people carrying these type of backpacks or this is their MO on how to shoplift and all those things um, so that uh, they can get a handle on this pretty crime and um, shoplifting and stuff like that so things like that along with uh, like return to work practices so that if an employee gets injured on the job that uh, now with WCB um, Pushing that the people get back to work as early as possible, return to work, uh, with light duties and all that stuff like that. So instead of all the small businesses trying to create these uh, procedures and practices on their own, it's a unified group that they look at best practices in the province. Um, uh, this Derek Armstrong, uh, he set something up down in the Morton Winkler area where he was from, um, stuff like that. So they're looking to model off of something like that. Um, where the industry comes together and so it has a unified front on a lot of things and shares the information. So something similar to Chamber of Commerce, but not like driving the economics, but for um, the operations of the business. Okay, so you're in the 10 lines. Okay. okay, the next is a letter from Manitoba Infrastructure regarding EMO, basically indicating that they, they're not part of the organizations that are indicated there. So I think. 
think you got an email from the safety officer and the EO person. Uh, the last item under correspondence is from Communities Care uh, looking for a donation request. Is there a desire on the part of the council to make a donation? We've not done it in the past. Okay. I think if we do like our in, in time time or whatever that like we did last year, but there's no offense. And I, I just think that if we want to, we'll do it personally. Okay. Go to new business, the uh, G5 meeting in October, any agenda items? Probably the uh, Manitoba Bridge program will be there, but that should be on the agenda. Right? There's a resolution coming up to that effect. In the We have the motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Friesen, resolve the proposed subdivisions of Plan 3018-34203-41902-46340-47989, PTS uh, south half of Section 203627, and numbered by Manitoba Municipal Relations Community Regional Planning as file number 4445-177398, be hereby approved. Discussion? Councilor Morio. Um, Derek, I guess this is more or less just uh, redesigning and resubdividing all those properties by the soccer pitches and stuff like that from what they currently are as on the maps to this new map that's out there for development. Uh, yeah, this, well, this new map was created in 02 or 03, I believe, but it's, there was a, a land ownership issue that stalled this for several years. And the recent troubles we've had were uh, were just one lot. It's actually where the lift station is was uh, the recent issue. But that's all solved. Okay, so all this stuff is to get it designed to what this map shows in our package. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Deloria. Uh, question, I don't have any issue with the subdivision, but uh, the, the road, the S-shaped road, that goes through there right now it's just called public road is this our last opportunity to name that road or we'll, we'll have a further yeah. opportunity to name that road you know further opportunity like right now it, it's fifth avenue west mm. it says public road okay but it was originally intended as fifth avenue west and the bay is called century bay okay but yes it can be changed so, can it be changed by us unilaterally or we have to go through planning to change that uh well, I don't think we, you know what, I'd have, I would have to get back to you to see, okay. I hope we're you, not naming it Public Road. <laughs> but if we're, You hope we're not, no, I hope we're not naming it Public <laughs> Road, but uh, yeah, can you get back to me on the process yeah. of, of how that is to go? Yeah. Okay, because I, I think if we are going to rename it, we should rename it before there's any development and then people have to change your addresses and that yeah. kind of thing, so. Councillor Sample. So was this just due to selling lots on the other end or just? preparing ourselves or we're we having some interest in some of those lots is there any water and sewer or anything like that going in or just the subdivision for for now this this is to so that we can finalize the sale of the five six lots on the very uh west i guess uh, if you look at it it's on the bottom side yeah, of the map yeah, but it's yeah. very west but it's all the riverside lots there they once they finalized yeah, we, council accepted an offer. Yeah, or no, but I just, it's, you're saying just to finalize it now. Yeah. The issue was the, the lot with the lift station. Oh, okay. Uh, planning, they just, they didn't tell us that that was the lot that was the problem until three weeks ago. Uh, that was the one that they had an issue with. They figured it was the residential property, but the lift station's on it. So. <coughs> Okay, any other discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, the next one is the information on the walk for the missing and murdered uh, Indigenous women. And uh, I'm not available there, but um, Mayor elect uh, Jacobson will attend. We have the motion moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Sacco. Resolved that the town has received the information and a copy of the permit required for the Albert Sharp Grand French and Center block to honor missing and murdered women taking place on October 4th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. And just 
<coughs> we have the motion moved by Councillor Fries and second by Councillor Sackle, whereas the province of Manitoba has made 2.5 million available to municipalities in 2018 for the final year of the Municipal Road and Bridge Program and was as 14 million was available to municipalities in 2017 for the Municipal Road and uh, Bridges Program. Therefore, be it resolved the Town of Sun River to call upon the AMM to lobby the province of Manitoba not to proceed with plans to transition the Municipal Road and Bridge Program into phase two of the Invest in Canada Infrastructure Program and fully reinstate the former funding levels for this essential program. Discussion, Councillor Morial. Um, I would definitely hate to see the province get rid of this uh, program. I believe it's uh, very beneficial and uh, and very uh, uh, sort of looking for uh, we need it within our budget to do our road uh, infrastructure. So um, I think we need to support this resolution and join the other municipalities that uh, we need to lobby the province hard to keep this uh, grant program in place because it's definitely funded a lot of the roads that we've built recently in Swanard. Any other discussion? I just echo what uh, Councilor Morio says. We've gotten this every year since I've been here. So a big chunk of our budget or a big chunk of the work we do depends on this. So I'll definitely be talking to my MLA and I hope you guys will too. We don't want to see this go. All in favor? The motion moved by Councillor Fries and second by Councillor Sapper was all the Superintendent Works Report we received. Questions to Derek on the Superintendent Works Report. Councillor Morio. Uh, the excavation on the, that lane on uh, Kelsey Drive there, yep. you have it here that says water and sewer. I thought that residents had a septic tank, like the field or something like that, or is there sewer in there? And also we're, not, we're not putting mains, the, the lines are being pushed. So that'll be an excavation at the manhole on Westwood yeah. Road, and then an excavation at the septic. Okay. But it's just a water line going there. No, nope, we're not. We're not doing anything right now with water and sewer. We're just building a road. We're excavating okay. and then replacing the base, okay. and T and C trenching will come and push the water and sewer lines. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I was asking like, uh, I didn't realize that there was sewer there. Also, I thought it was just the water that had to go in. I thought he had mentioned he had his own septic system? No, the septic line is parallel to the water line that would go underneath that gazebo. Okay. They both would get pushed at the same time. But, uh, okay. Councilor mm -hmm. Gloria. Um, just on this on this thing on, on 5th, and, I, and it's good you put in your report because I was going to ask about it because it seems like we're digging up 5th every second day. I think we dug it up two days in a row on the diff different sides of the street. Yeah. Um, so there's two, there's two places where this happened, and it was in that time period that they did these water and, and sewer main replacements. It's, it's the 200 block of 8th Avenue South and 5th Avenue North, 100 block. They stopped the water and sewer project at the curb. So it was a, it was a cost saving measure, so they didn't have to replace the curb. How ridiculous. Yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense. I hope you would never recommend us do something like that. No, never, no. <laughs> um, so. In order to fix this, because you know every other service on here is going to go. It's going to be. So can we do it without, like, do it on the sidewalk side? Or would we have to dig up the street? Uh, it, it can, but it depends. Those connections aren't directly underneath the curb. Some are in the road a bit, some are on the sidewalk a bit. If we under if we undermine, like, guaranteed that curb will Yeah, you don't undermine the road and just cause you some more issues. Okay. Councilor more. And correct me if I'm wrong, one of these uh, water digs that we did was, went right down the same hole that we just patched from a connection recently, right in front of the pawn shop area there, that uh, was just resurfaced. I know everything that we touched was not previously touched by us, okay. so if, the, if it, it could have been the service to the building next to it, okay. but none of these were repair that we've done recently. Okay, no, no, but the, the asphalt patch that we just put down a couple weeks ago oh, yeah. is gone. <laughs> or there's gravel there now, so did we go down that same hole? Uh, I know it should be to the building north of that, but I will have to double check. Okay. But it, if it did go down, there's we had to fix the, mm -hmm. that's where it happened. We had no choice. Yeah, I just wanted to show off all the seeing things there. Uh, 
Right. So it it would have been it would have been two side by side buildings, and if that sewer service is to the south of that building, and the building to the south, that service is in the north. Yep, it would be in the same excavation. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All in favor of the resolution? Oh, I'm sorry, Council. I just wanted to uh, mention that I talked to Derek about Crescent Drive. I was down there today and I talked to him and he says they're going to do something to make it smoother. So thank you, Derek. Also, I'd like to say uh, um, thank you and good luck to Russell Janai on his retirement. Oh, wow. Yeah, for, actually, I, I wanted to mention that. that uh, yeah, Russell spent 30 years with Public Works and he retired September 7th. Uh, yeah, I just you know wanted to thank him publicly for the for the hard work that he put in and and like I said, he was the type of operator that that got off the grader. We did get compliments from residents uh, that he would come off the grader, listen to their concerns, and try his best to do what they were doing to because he understood who was paying the bills. <clears throat> so yeah, good luck to Russell and uh, his retirement. All in favor of the resolution? It's carried. Council has a copy of the handy van report. We have the motion moved by Councilor Jacobson, second by Councilor Morrow. Result the handy van report for August 2018 be received. Discussion? In favor? Opposed? Carried. And we have the building inspection reports. I think there was another one in your mailboxes tonight if you picked it up. Second one, I'm not sure. It's the same, same one. one. Same, same one. Thank okay. We have the motion moved by Councilor Jacobson, second by Councilor Mora. Resolved that building inspection reports be received. Discussion? In favor? Carried. Okay, you have the management minute meetings for September 6th and September 13th. Any questions to Derek or Julie for those minutes? Council member reports. Council Morial. Um, this uh, period on September 5th, uh, we had a meeting uh, with our uh, individual that we've um, hired to help us look for an interim CEO and a, uh, advertise and search for a permanent CEO. And on the 13th, um, Mayor McKenzie and Councillor White and I went down to Dauphin and we attended the Boundary Commission hearing uh, regarding the, the provincial riding for Swan River and Dauphin with the proposed amalgamation. Um, it was very, uh, I think it was a unanimous front from all the presenters there that uh, no one was in agreement with that. Um, everybody uh, more or less had their reasons and stuff like that. There was a couple <coughs> different, scene, or different uh, proposals on how to realign the uh, the and stuff like that, but uh, the consensus was it's not going to work. Um, more or less, the, everybody from the north was singing the same tune and same proposal. Uh, the individuals down south they saw it more of as an east uh, east west trade route where they wanted to include St. Rose, Rawlin, that part of their riding. So uh, they also agreed at the commission that there was an oversight with the R and a mountain that it will not be part of two ridings, that they will put it all back into the one riding. Uh, but uh, they did um, strongly emphasize that uh, um, that they were there on a, a mission to find out what people wanted and stuff like that, and we'll be taking it all back, and by no means was the boundaries permanent at this point. Uh, so they'll take all that back and apply it with some different lenses and take all the feedbacks. Um, people can still submit online um, objections and suggestions and reports to the uh, Boundary Commission website. Uh, the deadline for that is October 1st, so I encourage everybody to, if you have anything to add to that, um, the more people they hear from, the better. Um, uh, tonight, uh, we met with a consultant on the arena report. And in the last two weeks, as I was getting my nominations papers uh, signed and all that stuff, met with various uh, ratepayers and listened to their concerns, discussions, all that stuff. So, uh, 
congratulations to uh, Lance Jacobson. He's our, going to be our forthcoming new mayor come the new year. So congratulations. Thank you. And good luck to all the other candidates that uh, have put their name in the hat. And uh, hopefully we'll see what the results are of October 24th. And I hope I'm back at the table. Thank you, Councillor Morrill. Councillor Deloria. Um, again, I want to congratulate Councillor J or Councillor or Mayor Acclaimed uh, Jacobson. Uh, looking forward to uh, having you as our mayor. Um, and I also want to thank uh, Mayor McKenzie and Councillor Sackle who have opted not to run. Um, and uh, thank you guys very much for your service for eight years for Councillor Sackle and 30 years plus for uh, Mayor McKenzie. You have uh, both left your mark on the and you have forgotten, so thank you guys very much. Um, I also want to pass on uh, kudos to your guys, Derek, and you know what? I They probably don't get kudos enough, but I had somebody who seeked, and, seeked isn't the right word, but I, I don't know the other tense. Sought. Sought. Socked me out? I don't know. Somebody who came to me specifically to, to make sure that I knew how good of a job they did on the water dig on 5th. They says, and this person knows how equipment was supposed to be operated. He said that they were absolutely professional operators. They were quick. Their their brakes were like that. They, they got the job done. They wanted to get it done right. So, you know what? I, I just want, can you pass that on, make sure, you know, even, maybe even if I could come down there and pass it on with you, yep. I don't know if that's allowed or not, but, but I, I was really happy to hear that, and, uh, and if you pass it on to, uh, to your guys. Um, another question on 1st Street North, in front of the apartment block that's owned by the lady from Camp Sack. that's right. the only way I know to describe it, is there an issue with the sidewalk there? That were scheduled to be fixed. Uh, yeah, that is one. That's that. There's several places on that sidewalk that are. On. When is that on the? I've had somebody approach me wondering when that's going to happen because they say we, we know about it. They do. We do. We have a prioritized list. Yeah. I can't tell you where it is on it right now. Okay. I'd have to get back to you, but it is. Okay. That is something that we've done this past winter. Was do a complete inventory of our sidewalks. Have a prioritized list. And, okay. Um, one other, and then one other issue that I want to plant a seed, I guess, and this is regarding, and I, I don't even know exactly how I feel about it, but I'd like to hear the, hear the discussion on it anyways, but I, I know it's an issue, I don't know what the answer is, but 13th and 3rd, I don't know if we need a four-way stop there, or if we need to change the way it is, but either way, it's, it's you know, I, I know the stop sign was switched, so you stop on 3rd to prevent you speeding up towards the school, but especially with the new pavement on 13th, that's become a drag zone. So I don't know if a... There's supposed to be a delegation coming to ask about that exact thing. Is there okay, because it's an issue. I, I've seen with my own eyes, almost accidents happen. I know people that live on 13th that say it's an issue. So just want to plant that seed, and if there's a delegation coming, that's great. At least um, I'd be asked. But Okay. Is there a delegation coming, Julie? Not, Not that formally. I haven't heard from Not formally? Yet. Okay. Well, maybe I'll, uh, I'll nudge these people to come because uh, something needs to happen there. Maybe, Derek, if you could start working on your yeah, analysis I, or your analysis of what should be done because, I mean, uh, what your recommendation is will, will carry some weight. So Yeah, we can provide a recommendation and even bring the history because we heard it was a four-way stop, but yeah. we'll have to pull up. Okay, if you can look into that, I just wanted to plant that seed. And I guess to the rest of us who are running, uh, uh, wish you all the best on uh, on the 24th. That's thank you, Councilor Jacobson. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank, uh, I guess, everybody that has encouraged me to uh, run for mayor. And I take the uh, responsibility very seriously. And uh, I look forward to serving our community with our new elected uh, council for the next four years. At the same time, I wish uh, the best for our outgoing mayor who served the community as best as he could for the last 30 years. And also to our friend, uh, Mr. Sackle, who served with me in the last eight years. My first eight years is also, so you both served your community very well and you should be very proud of yourselves. As far as, um, any other things that were not discussed already for me? I guess I attended the Chamber of Commerce uh, meeting that they held last week just to discuss uh, plans for uh, Black Friday. 
uh, promotions and so on. So uh, that's kind of something that's uh, gearing up now. So, uh, but besides that, that's all for me. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Friesen. Um, I experienced Meals on Wheels the other day. First time I've ever gone. It was very interesting. Put it uh, we had a lot of meeting in Benito. Uh, we need a new town board rep, if anybody knows someone. Um, Mr. Hunter uh, resigned, <coughs> so we need somebody to come on board. I also attended the mass registration, which I thought was very well attended at the Curling Ring. Um, and the Communities in Bloom seminar in Morris, I want to thank you very much for paying the registration and for the use of the van. Diana Taylor and I went down on Friday and we had a great day on Saturday, lots of keynote speakers. Uh, she wore on the big rain barrel, I didn't win anything. But anyway, thank you for that. Um, that Albert Sharkhan walk, uh, do we have to let anybody know we're coming? Because I'd like to go to that too. Thank you. Okay. Um, congratulations to you, Lance. And uh, I think that's where I had a Why is that the meaning for the grab of the and the arena report? That's it. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Sackle. Not too much to report. I uh, was away a little bit for uh, the last, I guess, two weeks. Uh, got a chance to step in today with the Review on the Centennial Arena, I guess uh, a bit of an eye-opener, we knew it was coming. There will be some hard decisions for the next council going forward, that's for sure. Uh, definitely some town consultations, and I'm sure the new council going forward will make the right decision, but it's a, it's a pivotal, pivotal piece of our community and the rink is kind of a, one of those uh, meeting places and, it, and it's going to be a tough decision, that's for sure. We're going to have lots of groups lobbying for a new rink and uh, lots of people lobbying to keep the structure that we have. So I'm sure uh, the great decision will be made. And congratulations to Lance. I'm sure he will make a fine mayor. Uh, and to the rest, everybody else that's running, and I guess to the rest that I served with, it's been it's been a pleasure to work with all you people. And, gentlemen and ladies and staff, it's been absolutely, I can't even say enough how much I respect everybody here. Um, Glenn has been an excellent leader to us and uh, made, uh, made serving on council a, a real treat. It uh, feels like a part of a family and it, it was probably one of the hardest decisions I ever had to make was not running. I think it was harder than when I decided to run because I appreciate uh, you know, and respect everybody so much here. And, and all the work that it takes to, to be a counselor, it's anybody that's running, I, I applaud them. Anybody that, that actually becomes a counselor and puts in the time, it, it, it's a big commitment and it's it's a service to our community and I, you know it's it's a bit of a job that you know you you kind of you know hear some positive today from, from ratepayers about our public staff because we, we tend to hear the negative. And, and the negative is, tra the bad news travels fast, good news never travels fast enough. Um, you know, we have a, a local radio station that puts a dark cloud over the community, and we have a beautiful community and so much to be proud of, and uh, I think everybody's done a fine job, and, and uh, congratulations uh, to Lance, and uh, we have a new person in the crowd here tonight, Johnny, and uh, good luck to him, because I, I fully... Uh, I fully uh, expect that uh, if he gets in, he'll do a fine job, and uh, yeah, good luck to everybody. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Sackle. Julie. Um, well, I've been meeting with uh, the prospective candidates and um, getting to know them, and, and uh, then letting everyone know at the end of today who's all going to be part of the election coming up. Um, Congratulations, Lance. Thank you. And um, thank you uh, for to everyone um, that I've worked with over the last almost eight years, and uh, 
Good luck to you, Glenn, on your new ventures, and same to you, Jason. And, uh, Thank you. Um, I have nothing much to add other than that I made a presentation in the Manitoba Electoral Boundaries Commission. I made a presentation 10 years ago. I felt a lot more positive this time after that during the presentation than I did the first time. The first time it was like you're, they weren't listening at all, but I got the feeling that the people on the Boundaries Commission and the chairman were actually looking for uh, uh, suggestions of how things could change. So I'm pretty optimistic. We'll see how that goes. And the uh, hospital foundation meeting uh, last night, uh, things are okay there. What we talked about is the possibility of selling the condo that we own, except I was getting pushed back today from the doctor's committee, I guess, and maybe we were a little presumptuous in moving to try and sell it because uh, the, with the new doctors and the clinic, uh, they're setting up a, a residency program here, and if that residency program is going to go forward, uh, I think maybe the condo will have to stay, and it'll be an integral part of those residents coming and staying in our communities. So I think the board is willing to take a look at that, in fact, to have another meeting. Uh, one thing the incoming council is going to have to look at is the money that's building up in that doctor recruitment fund. Now, if we move forward, if we get the go-ahead sometime uh, with the CT scan, maybe a large portion of that money that was maybe directed for recruitment could go to helping purchase the CT scanner. But that's what will have to be decided in the future. Well, that would be impartial because it would be a big recruitment tool to get them here, mm -hmm. so it would fit the... Anyway, again, to thank Council for their patience uh, over the last number of years. I've been here longer than others, and in all my years that I've been here, um, you know, everybody that has been at this table has worked in what they believe is the best interest of the town of Swan River. Now, people may have different ideas how you get to your goals, but in the end, Everybody's goal is the same, wanting the best for the town of Swan River. And I think a lot of people don't realize the amount of time it takes to be uh, a town councillor. That uh, it's not just two meetings a month; it's all the committees that you have, all the times that you're called away because some great pair has a concern that they want to talk about. So, uh, you know, you get some criticism in the media because of the amount of money you make. I think a councillor making eight hundred dollars a month is we're probably bore. Uh, if you work it out to an hourly rate, it's probably about 80 cents an hour. So, <laughs> anyway, keep up the good work. And uh, it's been a long time for me, so I guess, you know, it's, it's hard to leave after you've been here for so long, but uh, I'll look for something else to do. I've already had a couple of people asking me to volunteer at the, at the uh, museum and join the Lions Club, so I'll find some other things to do. And to the administrative staff, I don't want to forget about you. You're actually the mechanics that make the whole operation run. And uh, uh, I think council uh, through the years have been excellent in setting policy and moving in the right direction. So uh, with that, I, on behalf of me, to thank you for all your support for the years. We've got a couple of meetings left. So we continue on with the other resolutions. We have the motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Morio, resolve the council as follows. We hereby approve for payment, general accounts and check 23073 to 23149 for a total of 139,409.89 and payroll accounts and check 4302 to 4309 for a total of 113,060.12. Questions to Julie, I think uh, this chief financial officer has an explanation for most of the checks. Councilor Deloria. Yeah, he's pretty good at preempting us. Um, but I have a question on 0023079. Um, I know who it's to, but is that for the contract he does as building inspector? Because I, I just want a clarification that it's not for anything to do with the pool anymore. No, no, that's no. just okay. for the building Okay, inspection. so he still uses that same? Yes. Yeah, that's his own okay. company. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor of the resolution? It's carried. The motion moved by Councilor Delorier, second by Councilor Jacobson, resolved that the Swan Lake Watershed Conservation District, August 23, 2018, minutes be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councilor Delorier, second by Councilor Jacobson, resolved that the proper tax penalties 
for late payment listed as attached schedule a totaling seven thousand six hundred and six twenty be hereby cancelled discussion all in favor one thing Julie that never come you might want to comment on is the tax sale how the tax sale went in if you have any questions yes, about that right. We had a tax sale on September the 12th, and there was one person in attendance, one person from the public came, and we sold one lot, and we are now the proud owners of, <laughs> I lost track of how many lots, there are many lots, but, um, the court. yeah, yeah, mostly over in that area, so, yeah, okay. but we did sell one. Okay, thank you. We have the motion moved by Councilor Laurie, second by Councilor Jacobson, resolved that the Northwest Regional Library annual report be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. I can't bring my screen up there. Anything else? Okay. 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 The motion moved by Councilor Morio, second by Councilor Delorier. Whereas the Town of Swan River has experienced a water supply emergency this past February due to de deteriorating infrastructure causing several mechanical failures within the well site and whereas the wells have undergone extensive repair in order to provide clean water to the residents and businesses of the Town of Swan River and whereas the upgraded infrastructure monitoring equipment and isolation controls ensure the site shall provide water quality without interference, therefore be it resolved the Town of be it resolved that well controls tender be awarded a TSL mechanical alternate bid in the amount of 891193 Discussion. Derek? Councilor Morgan. Um, so just so that I'm clear, the, this is the one to start next spring. Um, with, it's the same work, it's just delayed till summer so that we don't have to pay the extra heating winter board. heating reporting costs and things well, like that. So. As you see in the review, the tender summary, uh, one bid, it's cheaper to go with this fall. It's not the lowest bid, but uh, I guess the engineering staff, I would like to see it in the spring just for just to take out the risk of uh, constructing a foundation in, in November. Councilor DeMarie. <clears throat> this is coming quite a bit over the original number that, and I know I'm not going to hold you to your number, no. but, it, but it was a bit of a shot, like it could, it wasn't an, your number wasn't an official engineered estimate or anything like that, but it's quite a bit over. Is there anything in the project that was a nice to have rather than a need to have like, uh, that would get this down to a more manageable number? Yeah, we were expecting this, even the way it was, to be around the 750, 800, but uh, we can, the, the there's not a lot of monitoring and stuff that can, we can take away. The VFDs, all of that mechanical stuff has to be there. There's, it's basically what we're doing. We're taking stainless steel pipe from the wells, getting it up into a building where we can put our isolation controls and our monitoring equipment, having the electrical for that. And, and it'll go down to and, and trust pipe. me, I absolutely know how much all that instrumentation costs. So. Right. But <clears throat> so it, one thing we, we could do, it would be drastic, but it wouldn't bring it down a small amount. It would bring it down a large amount, but get rid of the building. So we can go back to what we have now and have basically, we would have stainless steel pipes going from the wells to the raw distribution main lines, but all of our valves, everything would be 10 feet underground. So if well, something... That, that's not something happens like it did we have to spend those days ripping through frost mm -hmm. so that is one thing that we had discussed in the in the beginning is do we need a, do we really need a building do we not need a building so you're saying your option is is that if we didn't have a building we would use the existing building and put the instrumentation in there no there still would be a new building for it just to house the electrical but it wouldn't be as big right? mm -hmm. we're putting all the piping so yeah. that we can isolate get a discharge line out and get it well, into the I, header. I definitely and, think that's the right thing to do. But and we can put in like swabs so we can clean the lines. And is there nice to have? No, we we didn't go with like we did spec flight pumps for our lift stations. Mm -hmm. The reason we did that is to get the grinder pumps, and that they're all similar. They can be switched out. We went with the cheapest ones here. Uh, the instrumentation 
um, you know, like flow meters of it, is it the same stuff, instrumentation that we use at the water treatment plant? Like, you know, if, you, if a flow meter dies at one place, or do you, that way if you have to keep a spare, you only have to keep one spare? <coughs> uh, no, we did, we did not spec the exact same thing. We, we, we approved equals. So mm -hmm. yes, the same thing as in the tender documents, mm -hmm. but if they come with approved equal. Does the tender include any spares? No. No. Not flow, mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah. we're, we're going to get a pump. Mm -hmm. But and I mean, we can still operate with it's uh, none of that stuff as we should have to wait a week for full yeah. meter uh, pressure sensor. Right. Okay. okay, all in favor of the resolution? I'm sorry, Councillor Sackle and Councillor Friesen. Uh, just a question, two questions, I guess. Um, so, is there any risk in waiting till spring? Like, uh, are we risking having a, a problem, say, arise like we did? Before, now that we have uh, new pumps working in our new well, well three, which is in good condition and reliable, and has a new motor with that pump, we have two very reliable wells and pumps that we're running off of. Uh, from February to August, we were running on one reliable pump and a working well, but it was not reliable. We didn't know when it was going to shut down. We couldn't inspect it because we didn't want to break it. So. Uh, right now, yes, I'm, I'm extremely confident that we can uh, that we can we can get through anything. Right now, uh, uh, we have a fully functioning well with a backup. We also have a a third well, which is our refusal well, that we did put casing and a screen down at a minimal cost. Uh, all we would have to do is order drop pipe and a pump and a motor and uh, get that hooked into the lines and. And it would be online as well. So the second part is, and I, don't, I probably won't have any appetite from the rest of council, but this is this is nine hundred thousand, almost a million dollars of of, of dollars, uh, taxpayers' dollars, and there is a local contractor that is a little higher. And I know I've used this excuse before, and you know we're always struggling to keep our community going and to keep those dollars in town with a local contractor. I know it's a it's a it's a it's a, there's a fair bit of a bite. I don't see the exact spread. So that 3.8% is that higher than the lowest bid or the next bid? Uh, those are all the bids. So as you see, the tender bid is mm -hmm. what that if, if they if we choose a tender bid, we can't say when they start. They can still start in spring, but they can start in fall, and there's nothing we can do. Uh, if we pick an alternate bid, they have to start in the spring. So it's so, 3.8% higher for the local contractor to get that job? Uh, yes. I don't know. I, I'm, I know I'm maybe banging the drum that nobody wants to hear. And yes, it costs our taxpayers. To me, is a fraction, 3.8% more. But for all those dollars to be spent in town for local jobs, uh, local contractors, and that money just spreads around the valley. I'm, my two cents, and I guess I'm going to give it, but I always like to see the money stay within the valley. Councilor Jacobson. I was kind of going to go down that same route. I felt the same, you know, like it's 3.8. I, I don't know what the, the current bylaws is. It's 5%. The bylaws is 2%, I think. Yeah, it's okay. 2%. So, yeah, I feel the same way as far as dollars that are regenerated and the same within the community. The, the one sentence here that I didn't quite understand is. Uh, your last sentence, the most economical carries the least amount of risk for our taxpayers. What did that sentence mean? So the the most economical is the lowest bid. Mm -hmm. Carrying the least amount of risk is just choosing the alternate bid. So if you choose any of those alternate bids, that's what I'm saying. Let's start in the spring. We'll guarantee a, a foundation built in, uh, in the summer, late spring, as opposed to like uh, he can't, he's not going to order or submit shop drawings until tomorrow, which I'm pretty sure he's ready for. But uh, or, you know, one of them is ready for. But uh, still, if you allow four to six weeks for for materials to get here, it it can be done. I'm not saying it can't be done. This can this can be done, and concrete can be poured up to you know minus 18 if you do it properly. Uh, it's not to say this can't be done. 
It's just a risk. But all contractors submitted an alternate bid, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what you're saying is, you, no matter who we choose, you prefer us to choose the alternate bid. That's correct. So that starts in spring. Yeah, I just I, I like the idea of the local thing, but that's again my opinion, and you know what your recommendation is. But I guess whatever council feels is uh, we will know. Who's in the resolution? Pardon? Who's in the resolution? Uh, TSL. TSL Mechanical. But before we go down the, that path, I just have a question about on your financial review of the whole thing. Up at the top, so you, we've uh, we've set aside. Uh, I, I'm get, I'm a little bit confused on on the, the very first thing that you had put out about 150 for the well emergency. Uh, the well site upgrade was half a million and reserve contribution of 498 plus the grant from the MWSB. So we're at 1.498. Well, but down below, when you're proposing to pay for it, we only have we only have 1.230. No, no, that's that's uh, that is what that's with the actual cost yeah. of the total project being 1.229 million dollars. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I, I just round up to 230, right? Yeah. So that is how we are going to pay for it. The, the budget from the well site, 500,000. The grant, 500,000. And then we would take out of a water and sewer reserve, 230,000. Mm -hmm. That pays for the that pays for the project, which includes this tender. The, and the previous con tender. Yeah, the one where if we award this. No, but what about the previous tender that we did? back in June or whatever, phase one, like phase one. That's right. also part of this. That's also budget. part of this, yes. Okay. So that's that's the 195,000 for phase one. Phase two, which is our detailed design, which is always mm -hmm. spent, is 56,000, mm -hmm. totaling 252,000 that we've spent already. So to sum it up, we basically we're paying for it three different ways, from the 2018 reserve withdrawal, the 2019 reserve withdrawal, and the money from the MWSB. There'll, there'll only be one with reserve withdrawal. Well, we took we're gonna we're taking take out half a million in 2018, correct? No, that is just what we could take. I did say approved budget. It says 2018 reserve contribution, 490. So you want to leave that in there and take it all out next year? No, I want to leave. I'm I'm gonna put that all in there, and I'm only gonna take out what I need. If if right now I'm estimating that to be 230 thousand dollars. If we're under 10 thousand, it'll be 220. If we're over 40, it'll be 270. So uh, you're, you're getting 500,000 from the approved budget. Yeah. You're getting... But from the approved budget, that was a reserve withdrawal. The 500,000? Yeah. Was a that was, that, so we're, we're, we're still going to take out 2018 for the reserve withdrawal. Yes. Yes. Well, technically, no, it'll be in 19 because it's going to finish in 19. Yeah. But we're going to take a million dollars out of the reserve over over two years or whether it's one year. But in total, we'll take a million dollars out of the reserve. Seven, Our, oh, seven, seven, seven hundred and thirty. Yeah. Yes, yes, sorry, seven hundred and thirty out of the reserve, right. and the other half a million from yeah. Yeah, yeah, as long as as long as I have it straight where the money's coming from, because I might I might not be sitting here, but I might have to come as a delegation and remind people of the money. Yes, and so that what currently is in in the reserve is five hundred seventeen. We're putting okay. 498 this year, yeah. so we have a total of one million, which that number could have been on yeah. that. So after after this portion is all said and done, we'll have we'll have one million, but we still have the other 230 to take out there. We'll have we'll be left with about 700,000 in the reserve. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. As long as I have this all straight. Okay. Any further discussion on local contractor versus council member? Um, with the local contractor and stuff like that. Um, do you see any advantages of having him local so that if we do run into issues down the road that um, we do have the local contractor that did this? Could be expertise? Of course, uh, experience is priceless. Uh, having a guy that we can fall back on in an emergency would be extremely valuable for us. Uh, we're forced to tender, but uh, I I know, like, just to, just to let you guys know, nothing against a local contractor, but uh, this has happened in the past, and the company that we did invite to bid on this verbally did not, because we did not choose them as the local bidder. So just 
just be aware of what we wish for here. We may not have a lot of companies willing to bid on our projects because the word is already out that we do this, but it, that's, it is what it is, but uh, that is just the way they feel. Any other comments? Well, you guys all know my feeling on this. Okay, so we have the resolution. I'll just read the, to, therefore, be resolved that well controls tender be ordered to TSL mechanical for the alternate bid of 891.93. Any last discussion? So, so that's a, we're looking at $38,000 difference between the two? 76. It would be, if you're choosing the alternate oh, bids, you're looking at 40. You're looking 40,000 yeah, 40, difference. Oh, 40,000, pardon me. $40,000 difference. All in favor of the resolution? Opposed? Resolution is defeated. So does this mean we're not going ahead with the project, or is somebody going to move and second a different resolution? I'd move and second that we take the uh, local contractor the next. So do you want to write up a resolution? The resolution will be the same, but the last line would uh, that would be just changed to the where I'd be resolved. Okay. Do you want to pass that to Julie so she can talk here? I guess uh, uh, I forgot to bring it up earlier, but in the last council meeting that we had a discussion about the spray foam on the uh, senior citizen center where they had to pay a, a permit of excess of $900. I don't exactly know what it was. And they had asked uh, uh, for us to consider or maybe reconsider that, but I believe that we had some discussion and that the committee was going to look at that. And, uh, and see if there was anything in the bylaw that stated that they really didn't need it and so on, because they are hearing mixed messages from the province and some people within the province. So I think that we should have some <clears throat> further discussion on that and, and have some closure on it as well. So if I can open that up to uh, some discussion of that. I guess I feel for them, but it's the same permit that anybody else would have to pay um, I'm not sure there's anything we can do about the permit unless perhaps we give them a grant or something. I, I, I'm not sure they are a, a, not a charitable organization, but a non-profit organization that does good work in the community. I, that to, my feeling is you have to charge them what the service was worth. We didn't charge anybody else, but I guess should, should council choose to perhaps give a grant? I'm not sure. Oh, uh, so, so it's for the. I'm, I'm sorry. Which building? They did an improvement on the senior citizen senior citizen center where they spray foamed the roof, and, and they got a government grant. But they were also required 
by our bylaw to have a permit for that project. So where does their funding come from to keep, to keep this to keep this building going and, and the type of services that they provide for our seniors? Like where does their funding come from? Do they have a shortfall every year? Well, I don't know. I think they pretty much fundraise their dollars themselves. The funding for this project came from the province. If there was a, a grant that they could receive. Yeah. Well, I definitely would would put a motion on the table. You know, I, I, our seniors, and as, as much work as in, in what they do down there for our seniors, and if it's all locally fundraised money, uh, I would have no problem. You know, we want to keep their costs down as much as, as they can, and we don't want to set precedents by not charging them for the permit because that is the bylaw and we have to charge them. But I definitely would be in favor to to relieve some of their their pain and, and put a grant forward. And that's just my opinion. Gary, yeah. just to just to give council background information on this, the, the the senior center is an assembly building. So regardless of the size, that is the jurisdiction of the office of the fire commission. So oh. they are in charge. So we have in writing from the OFC the inspector telling the town to handle this. This is our permit. Whether they can do that or not, we don't know. But that's what we have in writing from the OFC inspector that has pushed this forward on Ron, which is why they got their permit. So I've called uh, it all stemmed from their community places project manager who wouldn't accept our permit because he knew that it was an assembly and it was OFC jurisdiction. So he said he would not accept that permit and of course he doesn't have the authority to say that. So I did contact his supervisor and, and they have inquired with the OFC and they are getting conflicting answers on whether the OFC can do that. Can they hand responsibility to municipal uh, jurisdictions? They've had one answer yes, they've had another answer absolutely not. So I don't know if maybe we can well, maybe we wait should, on this. I think we should wait, but I think we should, if, if the OFC is handing us responsibilities that are theirs, I, I think we should be leery of taking those responsibilities. Right. I think we, if, if it's their responsibility, we're not getting, unless we can charge a permit for it, we're not getting paid for you know, this is one instance, but if they're going to hand all assembly buildings to us, there's two instances. There's two, so, so the, the I, I would be leery of taking responsibilities from the provincial government. Right. If it's the province's responsibility, let them deal with it. Right, and so that is that is where, like, we have the we have it on paper for the go ahead to go on this, basically saying you guys deal with the permit. So that's where this is coming from from the OFC inspector. So once we dig into it, uh, I guess. I'm awaiting uh, from Mark Branson his answer on, on what exactly the OFC is able to do. Because if it finds out that they're not able to do this, then we will not be permitted. Can Can you? I, I agree. We should wait. But can you also talk to Ed Clark at the uh, senior center and just uh, you know calm his uh, his concerns? I think they're they're quite concerned about this. So. I'll give you his uh, cell phone number right after this. Yeah. Because uh, he wants to call tomorrow morning. Oh, yeah. Okay. And just let him know to be patient, and and we're looking into it. Yeah. Council Sack. Can you think of any timeline on how long this may take? Let's see. I have no idea. Community, he's the community places organizer, and he's, he's, not, he's not with the OFC. He's asking them whether this is going because it's one of his project managers asking is this an eligible cost if they're not even the jurisdiction you should be dealing with this so that's a I don't know it could be a while I'm not sure <clears throat> but you know I don't want to be the only one saying this but, but I and I don't want to be able to line saying this but uh, our, is, should we give direction to, to Derek that we don't want to be doing responsibilities that aren't ours exactly so, so I, I, I think yeah. If council's in agreement, I run with that. Say so in the future, absolutely. Or even in the past, say you know what this was, this lot of permit here that we're in the middle of, we don't want anything to do with it. So in the even in the case that the OFC can give authority over to municipalities, we, don't want it. we just straight out say well, not at all costs. And unless they, if it's their responsibility, there must be a reason they don't want it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know what it is. 
Well, unless they're going to give us some dollars attached to that responsibility, I'd say no. Thomas was sad. So if the OFC does say, okay, well, we'll, we'll issue the permit or we'll look after it, what will the expense be for the senior center then? I know that their, cost, their fee schedule is based on cost, so I, I'm not sure. I would have to ask the OFC what their fee schedule is. So we might be back in the same boat, or we might be cheaper to use our route in, in the end. I, I don't know. I, I'm just really concerned of going down the slippery slope that of, you're right, it, it may be more, but to, to, get, to not have to take on this responsibility, I the job is done already? The, the job is done, yeah. Councilor Moore. Um, I agree we need to sit back and get more information from whose actual responsibility is this, and I agree we don't, we don't want it, even if they want to push it here. Um, but from what I understand, I believe the permit has been <coughs> from yep. the town. Um, so, so I would be also in favor down the road um, supporting a motion to refund like, as a grant back those monies that have been paid for that permit. Um, however, it washes back out to, if it ends up back going into the province and thing um, on a go forward basis. But uh, to follow the bylaws and things like that and the building permit. Uh, as it stands right now, they were told they needed a permit, they got it, they paid for it. Um, so that cleans up that, but instead of creating uh, exceptions to the rule, <coughs> I'm in favor of granting that those dollars back to them so that, uh, but, uh, but then with the battle with the province and the OFC on that, um, they may have to take that up with them, but uh, <coughs> I agree with Councilor Glory that, uh, Councils that even if they want to push that responsibly back, there's a reason why the OFC has that jurisdiction, um, and it, it's just a I wouldn't say it's sneaky, but it's a minute part of the province offloading back onto the municipalities again, as to little bit by little bit, and hopefully, we don't see this little sliver and all of a sudden the one time exception becomes the norm, and we don't want that. So. Okay, Jason. So that being said, if it falls back onto the OFC, we're going to have to refund those monies anyways? Is that what I'm hearing? I would say, I would think so. Like, if it so goes back, we would have to refund it, but... Um, so do we want to wait, or do we want to just say that we're giving you a grant in lieu of our permit, and then I guess if... Well, I'd rather wait and just see how this shakes out. I, I mean, the senior center's not going anywhere. If, if we can get a timely resolution by next council meeting, I hope that uh, see how it plays out. Show of hands, how many people just for conversation piece are in favor of giving um, the uh, the grant in lieu of? Mm -hmm. oh, I, agree. Uh, I, I guess just, my only just my only thing is it just it, it helps Derek's conversation. He's going to call them and say, you know, this is the situation. And you know there is an appetite from the town of council, and there is looks like a, you know majority saying that they they probably would if this is the case, but we want to make sure and get clarification first, and it just kind of eases the people that are you know we have a, an individual that donates a lot of time to that center, and he seems to be awfully upset, and and you know instead of losing a volunteer, you know just let him know that his his. His concerns aren't falling on deaf ears. It's just all like, I like that. Yeah, I'm not opposed to the grant either, but I, I'd rather wait because we might, rather than give a grant, be refunding the actual yeah. permit. And I know it's semantics. It's, mm -hmm. you know, we're splitting hairs there, but there would be a difference as far as if we actually took a permit, then it's, we're telling the OFC that we're willing to do that job. Yeah. So I, so as far as the money, I, I'd probably give it back to them as is, it would be my feeling. but. As far as what, what that actually looks like, I think we should wait and see. Mm -hmm. I just thought yeah. you know, just make make Derek's life a little yeah. easier when he's yeah. having the conversation with the individual. Yeah. Dave, I will inform Ed. So, of the so are we going with this resolution or not? No. Not yet. No. No. Okay, we have the motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Jacobson. We saw whereas the town of Swan River has experienced the water supply emergency this past February due to deteriorating infrastructure causing several mechanical failures within the well. 
whereas the wells have undergone extensive repair in order to provide clear water to the residents and businesses of Swan River, and whereas upgraded infrastructure monitoring equipment and isolation controls ensure the site shall be provide quality water without interference, be it resolved that wells control tender be awarded to Liddell Construction, an alternate bid in the amount of 926250 Discussion? Yeah. Can I have a recorded vote? And I guess I just want to reiterate one more time, um, similar to the issue we had about a month ago when we bought the truck, we need, and as Derek said, we need to be careful what we wish for with this. We already have outfits that are not giving us bids because they know that we do this. Um, we've got to be careful. Uh, we want to make sure we're getting the best deal for our taxpayers. Councilor Moore. Um, I wholeheartedly support uh, supporting the local uh, businesses as much as we can, but uh, forty thousand fifty-seven dollars is a big chunk of change. And last budget season, we met numerous times to find a hundred thousand dollars. So um, forty thousand goes a long way. It's paving the street a portion of the street. It's a, um, it's a big chunk of change. So, concerning okay. that. Um, I compete in tenders all the time. There's there's a little clause that probably our tenders say it, and I'm sure they do. Not always lowest tender accepted. Absolutely. And unfortunately, you win some, you lose some. If, if people want to put a pout on and don't want to tender in the town of Swan River, uh, by all means. But I think if we want to shop local, we want to stay local, we're going to lead by example. That's just my own opinion. And we're, we're a better place to start than right here at this table. But that's just me speaking again. Okay, any other discussion? Yes, recorded vote. Okay. All in favor of the resolution? Opposed? Motion is carried. We have the motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Laura, resolved that pursuant to section 152 3 of the Municipal Act, this council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. All in favor? Carried. 